Good morning and welcome to Morning Journal. This is session 197 and you are hanging out with me. My name is G. We do this every Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Time. I know if you're tuning in live, you might notice it's a few minutes after 6, but we open up the doors of the VIP at 6 and we bring everyone else along shortly thereafter. So thank you for joining us for this session. We'll be having some conversations. I guess if I had to pick a theme based on the questions that we have is talking about fear of success. Fear of success. That is the uh, the overarching theme. But of course, we always do this before we get started. We always um, do a couple check-in questions just to kind of see how everyone is. So let's start. Let's start there. Oh, well, let me do this first. Let me make sure that everyone can see. If you're watching, if, you know, if you're watching and you want to share it. Uh, Alberto says, is that a real thing? Who's afraid of success? Oh, you'd be surprised. We're going to break that down. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. And I think that once we break it down, you'll understand kind of how that plays out for us. All right. So here is our check-in prompt to get us started. We want to just kind of find um, find our place in the current moment. So right now, I notice. Right now, I notice is the prompt that we're going to use to get things started. So for me, I noticed the warmth of my tea and I noticed that the proportions are about right. Sometimes you can water down your tea, you know, put too much water in there and it just feels kind of weak or it can be oversteeped. It's just kind of, you know, I know Esso like to leave the bag in the whole time and it just kind of sits there but there's a I think it's um there's an art to it where you get the exact right flavor and you have maybe three minutes <laughs> you got about a three minute window when it's just the right temperature just the right flavor as much as you would love to just sip and savor it over time it's gonna get cold and then it's not gonna be quite as good but life is like that in a lot of ways right there are things that have sort of a peak when they are at their best, best enjoyed during a very finite window. And then after that, it's okay, but it's not quite as good as it was. Timing is important. If you want the optimum experience, timing is important. So, I'm sipping this, trying to savor this tea, and hopefully it continues to do what it needs to do to my throat and my voice. So I turn the question to you. Right now I notice, and let me know, what is it that you notice in your current environment, in your current situation? Right now I notice. I notice how quickly the ice has melted in my water, which lets me know that it's pretty warm in the room. I notice that I'm not sweating as much as I usually am at the beginning of the stream. For some reason, I sweat even, you know, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh man, sometimes it's not a good look. I have to remember to keep a cloth nearby so I can lightly dab my my forehead and my brow so that I don't look like I'm up here up here looking like a demagogue 
Oh, man. Alexis says, hot tea becomes good iced tea, for sure. Noble says, right now I notice my thoughts. Happily remembering last night's work successes. Yeah, Ref uh, positive reflection on the night. Tim is here, welcome in Tim. Nice to see you up in Adam this morning. Let us know, what did you notice right now? Warrior says, I notice my irritability. My morning hasn't started well. I also notice I'm stressed. sort of a negative reaction to the circumstances in your environment are not wanting things to be a way that they are that causes a level of disturbance and then just naturally there's a, the stress of living sometimes we're faced with that first thing in the morning I can definitely appreciate that feeling for sure Marisol is here Good morning, Marisol. Thank you for joining us. Right now we're talking about what we notice. Alexis is noticing the slow disillusion of hunger by way of mozzarella sticks. Did, um, did Noble, you know, bring some mozzarella sticks into your experience this morning? So Noble is happily home in the dish room. It's sparkling clean for the upcoming inspection. Love that. It's nice to know that you have left things better than you found them. That's a good feeling. Marisol notices nervousness using a new payment method for bills. It's like, man, I need some confirmation. And I'm like, is my joint about to get cut off or not? I know I paid y'all, but am I going to, did y'all get it or no? <laughs> I feel you, Marisol. Sometimes, you know, we have to use, it's good to have the convenience of doing things, quote, unquote, the easier way. But there is a comfort that comes from actually having a conversation with another human to confirm that this transaction has posted properly and that I'm good to go, that y'all not about to pull up on me. <laughs> so, or that you're going to get charged twice and instead of giving you the money back, they just credit you for next month. And but you like, no, though, I can't use that credit to pay my other bills. Like, run me, run me my joint back, yo. <laughs> yeah. I've already got charged twice for something. Messing around and refreshing the browser. It's like, is this working? Refresh, and they charge you again. Curses. Yeah, that's stressful. Hopefully, hopefully it can get sorted out and you can be in a good place with all that stuff because, yeah. Nobody wants to deal with that. Marisol, thank you so much for the like. I appreciate it. So... Please feel free to stay checked in to your current environment and your situation. I have, an, I have another prompt that is, I guess, it, I, I guess you would say is half check-in and half preparation. <laughs> I'm 
I'm guessing that's a typo. OMG, I'm OMG. Sorry, I'm I'm noticing I'm drinking off. What are you? You're drinking off. Jehovah Thickness in the building. Welcome in. It's good to see you this morning. I hope I hope that you are doing a little bit better today. I know that you were struggling a bit yesterday. I know it's a really really tough time. A lot going on, a lot of stress mixed in with the joy. But, you know, I believe that I believe that you can get through it. So I'm glad to see you for however long you can stay. Marisol, thank you so much for the spoons. Always love the support. Thank you so much. Richard is here over on Facebook. Good morning, cuz. Nice to see you up in Natum. Marisol, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We are getting ready to go into our next prompt. And I, like I said, um, this one is kind of part um, check-in and part setup for the rest of the conversation. There's popcorn. There's popcorn in the chat. In case uh, you're hungry and you want to have some refreshments, thanks to Marisol. Beautiful. Thank you so much for all the support. All right. Daryl is here. Good morning, Daryl. Let's get into this next prompt and uh, see where we see where we stand on this one. Okay. Jehovah Thickness, roll that ankle again. How did you roll your ankle? Let me know. How, how did that happen? Cat's up is going to bed. All right. Well, thank you for popping through and saying hi. Walking up the stairs and thought it was another step, just like that. So let's take a look at this prompt. Let me know what you think. Would you rather, would you rather have to read everything aloud? Every word that you read, you had to read it out loud. Or would you have rather sing everything that you say out loud? So this is a would you, would you rather scenario. Would you rather have to read everything out loud that you see? when you read something or would you rather sing everything you say out loud so Britt says I would rather sing so you couldn't speak you could only sing it's like you're living um, in a musical <laughs> but it's not everybody it's just you who's constantly living in a musical Jehovah Dignity says, I'm perfectly fine with that. It matches my dramatic personality. <laughs> okay, yeah. Marisol says, I'm not into Broadway. So I guess you would say you would rather read every word. Now, here's the thing that you might not be thinking about. I think, Esso uh, says, I'd rather read. I already do that. You're already vocalizing. But I'm, um, I think, um, we might underestimate how much text we come across just like every every piece of text that comes into your experience so you're riding down the road and you're reading the signs out loud um you know you're just walking around the house and you just anything you see that you process as language you have to say it out loud <laughs> we're reading constantly so it, i think that would be pretty exhausting Esso says, I would sing because I trip over my words when I try to read aloud. So we don't want to deal with that. Read everything, complete with voiceovers. Says no more ancient. I don't think either of these is sort of like an optimum way to be because it kind of calls, 
One thing both of these would do is call attention to you. Chino says, singing is tough, hard on the vocal cords, I like to constantly be singing. I think it's important to note though that there's some languages, some spoken languages that are very musical that are borderline singing anyway. You know, there's a lot of music in language and some people just have a very music, a very musical tone to the way that they sing. The way that they speak, I said sink. <laughs> I guess that's the combination of speak and sing. I think the point of bringing this up, like I've said before, is kind of a setup for the conversation. Because if you moved in the world that way, naturally it would be something that would make you, it would kind of call attention to you. Maybe in ways that you would prefer that it didn't. I think that um, with the core conversation being about fear of success, there's a lot in that that is kind of centered around being willing to stand out, um, being willing to stand as the tar as a target. So, welcome back, Marisol. So let's take a look at one of the first prompts that might fit a little bit more closely into the theme of the conversation today. And uh, yeah, I feel, let me, I just want to kind of point out, I feel, I feel exceptional, exceptionally relaxed this morning. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that turns into. Marisol, thank you so much. I really appreciate, really appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Marisol. Beautiful, beautiful morning. I, I really appreciate the support. All right. So let's take a look at this one. <laughs> what crowd might you fit in with? Marisol is diligently climbing the chart of supporters. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So the question is, what crowd might you fit in with? Chino comes immediately with none. I don't fit in with any crowd. And I think that our uniqueness and authenticity is a, is a valuable asset. And <laughs> Britt says, I fit in with the delusional penguins. I think that it's true. It's important to be willing and able to kind of stand on your own. Good morning, Cherry Chew. Aloha. Thank you for joining us. The geeky gamer cosplaying crowd. Tatsumaki is here. Welcome in. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about the crowd that we might game in might fit in with. Noble says the gaming clubs, Comic-Con groups, and surprisingly well to match. Love it. Marisol says, even when I'm part of a crowd, I still don't fit in. Okay, just thank you so much for the like. I appreciate you. Even when I'm a part of a crowd, I still don't fit in. I can dig that. So Leon is in the chat. Good morning, it's good to see you. Appreciate you for stopping through. We're talking about the crowd that we might fit in with. Some of us feel like we have our crew, we have our people. Some of us feel sort of like perpetual misfits. I think that, um, our own unique abilities and contributions, all that withstanding, notwithstanding, we are kind of faced with the reality that most things come from a scene. So Chino says the, me the metal and goth crowd for sure is where I might fit in. 
yeah, most things, most creative work comes from a scene. Um, and I don't think that we ever overcome our need to experience a sense of belonging. Um, even if we are comfortable in, you know, in our solitude, we all kind of have some sort of need, or most of us have some sort of need or desire to belong somewhere. We want to have sort of a connection to community um, in some circumstances or in some aspects of your life and experience. So it's not about being a follower. It's, uh, it's about being able to have a community where you can serve and learn and grow together and experience a connection and to know that you are not crazy. Because if you sit alone by yourself, if you don't have any feedback from anywhere, you'll, you know, you'll lose it. <laughs> Some meds might just be listening in today. I can dig that. Well, I'm just glad to have you here. So Jay says, my first pride parade will be this June. I don't know. I don't know if um, Brit is still accepting applications to the delusional penguin to the delusional penguins if, you, if there's something that you have to do to get down you know there might be some sort of rites or rituals that you have to go through you might have to get jumped in <laughs> Marisol says thank God for online making connections long distance for sure I think that if you you know it could be the case that you live in a place where there are not a lot of people who have uh, similar interests that you have or, you know, into some of the things that you are into. So we have the benefit of kind of expressing ourselves and showing up in online spaces like this and other communities where you can kind of explore some of the things that you might not have had an opportunity to explore and to realize that you are not alone in your experience. I think one of the most challenging things that we are faced with whenever we are suffering through something um, is the sense that we are suffering alone, that no one understands what it is that we are going through. But when we find out that that's not the case, it can make the suffering more bearable. It's like, oh, okay, this is, you know, this is among, you know, this is another among the human, another thing among the human experience that I have, um, you know, that I'm dealing with right now. And if they made it through, maybe I can too. Marisol says, I met people online and they became my friends in real life. Well, at least one person. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, right? Sometimes people are right there, right there beside you and you don't notice them until, you know, you bump into them <laughs> out here in these virtual streets. So, I think that most folks can appreciate the value of a scene whether it's you know something that's oriented around an area of interest for you um, something that's connected to your identity or your beliefs it's great to know that you know that there are others when the load might get heavy there's someone else who can relate to your experience um, and that might be a mentor or might be someone who you can mentor. I think it's gratifying when we've gone through something, when we overcome a challenge. Uh, there's something that's really satisfying when we see someone else that we know that we can help, that we know that we can be of service or add value to another person. That's extremely gratifying. There's few things that feel better than turning on the lights for someone who might be stumbling around in a darkness you are familiar with. The 
tallest gnome said gnome says that I crave people who are authentic and I find myself drawn to them you just get a sense when someone is being real and authentic and that's something that's really attractive and I agree with that I agree with that because it kind of is um, when people show up that way it's sort of a, a permission slip of sorts it gives you it allows you to take a deep breath it's like okay I think you know I think it's okay for me to be me here I can kind of let some of this guard down and put down some of these weights that I'm carrying. There is something very refreshing about that. All right. So if we're ready, um, we can go ahead and just drop a heart in the chat for me. If you're ready, we can go into the next prompt. If you're still thinking about your crowd, your scene, where might you fit? We'll go to the next one. So the last prompt was about fitting in. And the next one is a bit about standing out. So, what is one thing that makes you stand out? What is one thing that you think makes you stand out? For those of, for those of you who kind of struggle to identify where you might fit, it could be because of that part that just won't stand out, that won't, that's different. Samarasol says, my eyes. So, of course, now I have to look at your profile pic, Marisol. <laughs> Let's see what you're talking about. Let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. All right, Marisol, I think you do have lovely eyes. Noble says, me being an ancient makes me stand out. Alexis says, the fact that I sign, that English is my second language after ASL, makes me stand out. I guess at some point, um, we, have to we have a relationship with the things, uh, we can have a complex relationship with the things that make us stand out. Chino says, I can sing a bit. This is the second time that, third time that uh, this come up, Chino. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like we need to hear. <laughs> it keeps coming up. We want to hear, um, we want to hear them vocals. Maybe, um, I don't know if you go live or you cast a song or something like that. So, um, Jova Thickness says, my eye colors. So the fact that there's more than one. Maybe each one and the fact that there's more than one is something that makes you stand out. Oh, heterochromia. Okay. Yeah. Gino says, you remember that frog from the old WB? Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. <laughs> oh, man. I hear you. He'd only sing when nobody's looking. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. <laughs> oh, man. I thought you were actually talking about the frog that kind of represents, um, that kind of represents that brand. So Sunny is here. Welcome in, Sunny. 
Nice to have you this morning. We're talking about one thing that makes you stand out. Cherry Chew's like, I'm not sure. You're not all that sure about what makes you stand out. Sometimes it's a question that's difficult to answer yourself. Sometimes you need to ask other people, hey, what is it about me that stands out? Tree Cherry Chew, thank you so much for the likes. I appreciate you. <laughs> Making a good point there. You said, Chino, on Smooth, nobody's watching you. They're only listening. So, maybe, I mean, like, for instance, you might be singing right now, and we can't hear you. <laughs> so, if you're not sure what makes you stand out, maybe... It's a question that you can ask the folks who are around you. What would you say is something that stands out about me? And as I was, as I was mentioning before, sometimes the things that make us stand out are not necessarily comfortable. They draw attention that we don't want, or they make us uncomfortable. We would rather just kind of be able to, we would rather just be able to just chill and be but the standing out thing, right? It's like, why y'all looking at me? So how comfortable, that's you in the spotlight. <laughs> how comfortable you are, are you in the spotlight that the unique thing about you puts you in? So Tim is back. S. Rowe, thank you so much. Britt says, uh, I love being in the spotlight. I can dig it. <laughs> I think that there's, if you are, like, let's say, I think inherently, if you are a performer of any type, um, if you choose that life, I think that there is something inherently attractive to you about the spotlight, whether you want to admit it or not. You you like that shine, you know? It's like, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to let these folks know. <laughs> Oh, man. So, Britt says, I've been performing my entire childhood. Alexa says that my extensive knowledge of games helps me stand out. I think we, do, we feel differently about the things that make us stand out. If they are things that we have sort of earned through practice and, you know, learning. Something that we've kind of intentionally built within ourselves. I think we feel differently about standing out regarding those things than we do about just kind of elements of who we are that we don't have anything to do with. Yes, it's nice if you have something about your appearance that people notice, but you really can't much take credit for it. It feels different when, you, you know, when you've taken the time to try to get good at something and then people notice you for it. I think that feels pretty good. So, friends and family tell me I'm an inspiration. Life has been tough, and I keep keeping on. So people are inspired by the grace with which you have navigated the challenges in your life. That's got to that's gotta feel good. So Marisol just sang for, every, for the first time. How did it go? How did it feel to sing? I think, you know, the tallest known points out that sometimes we, you know, you're too close to yourself. You take for granted some of the things about you that others find extremely fascinating or very special because it's you and you're with you every day. You might not even acknowledge it or notice it so much. Marisol, it was a bit pitchy, dog. It was a bit pitchy, but I did it for enjoyment. There you go. Did someone tell you it was pitchy, or did you just feel it when it came out? <laughs> All right. Well, it's good that you know. At least you know. All right. So here's the next question, and this one is a little bit tricky, maybe. Um, 
And again, just as a quick reminder, if you're watching this and there's ever one of these prompts that come up that you feel like, well, I might have an ask for this, but I really can't think of it right now. Uh, maybe I want to come back to it later. I invite you. You can always, if you swipe over to the right, then the chat disappears. And then you can just take a screenshot and uh, maybe you can come back to a question if it just kind of gets the wheels turning and you're not quite ready to um, get into it. Or maybe it's none of our business and you just want to pull out your journal and write about it yourself. You can always do that. And this might be one that requires you to do that, but let's share it. The next prompt. What What would you lose if you won? Cherry Chu has got an outstanding balance. Ain't nothing, nothing worse than an outstanding balance. Well, I, if I'm reading that the right way, outstanding is such a weird word. Because a lot of times, as so many words in English, it can be something really great or something really awful. It's like, man, my balance is outstanding. <laughs> Sweet is in the building. Thank you for joining us. Sweet, always nice to see you. Like, my balance is outstanding, fam. Let me tell you, my balance, outstanding. Olympic level. Marisol, thank you so much for the likes. I appreciate you. Whatever you do, though, um, Cherry Chew, do not see Marisol about for advice about settling an outstanding balance because Marisol is like got some systems in place that are not uh, working well. Marisol, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Lovely, lovely. Ah, oh, I don't know. I appreciate the love this beautiful Tuesday morning. Um, always brings a smile to my smile to my face. I really appreciate it. So this question, this question, what would you lose if you won? And this is a question that kind of speaks to sacrifice. I think in most cases, we, we do look for wins win. We look for win win situations. But a lot of times, you just gotta like let some things go and make choices for a higher good. And it's important to. Um, it's getting like too. Jerry Chu says you got to go. Okay. I get it. Get into in the fields. I know it's like that sometimes. Thank you for being here though. And I hope that things are, will work out for you. So once again, what would you lose if you won? Noble Ancient comes in with an insight. If I won, I would lose the opportunity to learn a new tactic or technique to make a change I might need. Marisol says, I might lose my new friend. If I won my crush, I would lose my new friend. Hmm. I might lose freedom. If I won, feels like a lose lose Tuesday. Yeah, lose lose Tuesday. Hmm. So, if you recall, we're talking about the. Hey, thank you so much, Go Dogs. Thank you. I really appreciate that. We made it to number one in our first hour. That's awesome. So, Matt says, might lose freedom. You win a crush, you lose a new friend. Man, and we were talking about the fear of success and someone was asking, is that a thing? This is why it's a thing. 
This is why fear of success is a thing because there is not, there is rarely, oh, Alberto's back. So let me say it again because he was the one that asked the question. So Alberto earlier said, is fear of success an actual thing? And this prompt is evidence that it is because I think that no matter what the win is, there is always a corresponding loss. So sometimes there are things that we are unwilling to give up in exchange for the thing that we want. And a lot of times that kind of relates to our current identity, right? Like there's some things that we believe to be true about ourselves that we are clinging to because it's a scary thing to feel <clears throat> it's a scary thing to kind of feel detached from who you are. Even if you, you know, even if there are some things about yourself that you aren't super stoked about, it's you and you're familiar. So sometimes a win will shake that sense of identity. Like, you know, is this who I am? Mess points out that there is suffering and everything. So. Sweet says that some amount of ego and identity related to the constant L I'm holding. Yeah, you gotta, that, that L that you holding you wear that L around your neck like a like Flavor Flav's clock, you know? That chain that you rock in around your neck. It's like if I, if, I, if I lose this L, people won't even know. It's me. Everything changes in at least a very, and at the very least one day, one way, daily. Alexa says, I don't know how to answer this, G. Yeah. I know it's a tough one. There aren't any easy answers. But I think that if there is, I would say the answer to this question is also could potentially be the answer to why you procrastinate. You know? It might be that there's something that you are afraid might happen if everything worked out. Sometimes it's like, it's never ending. Like if I do this, then I have to do that. <laughs> and I don't wanna do that. There is a sense, um, Alberto says, relish, relishing the idea of evolution. I think there is a sense of escalation that we might kind of feel whenever we're taking a step forward. It's like, okay, I could do this, but then when I do this, they're gonna expect me to do that. And then if once I do that, then they're gonna expect me to do that. Like if I, you know, if I do it now, I gotta do it all the time. I don't wanna do it all the time. So let me just stay right here. Twins Terrace is here and enter a nickname. Thank you for joining us, folks. Alberto says, evolution is inevitable. Like death, we should welcome the change. I got it out the mud. And that's what it's about. Getting it out the mud. That's, <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, um, that's what I tell my mom whenever I'm holding one of her cards in a game that we're playing. And she knows I hold, I'm, have, I'm holding the card. And I was like, hey, yo, I got the card, but you're going to have to get it out the mud. I'm not letting you out. <laughs> oh, man. It's a fun thing to say to somebody, hey, yo, you just got to get it out the mud. I'm not here to help you. Mm. So, the thing that you would lose if you won... the things that you would lose if you won. 
Yeah, it's not an easy answer, but it's worth coming back to and thinking about. I'll let you sit with that for just a second. Dreams. Med says, I would lose my dreams if I won. That's a very useful insight. I think that a lot of people recognize when a lot of times you even see when people achieve success that they feel they don't know what to do next. They don't, they lose their, yeah, they lose their get up and go. Like I I made it. It's like, now what? Now I feel, now I don't have anything ahead of me to look forward to. I don't have any more dreams. And there's just something beautiful. So Thomas Nome says, I've been struggling with insomnia. If I win, I will have to put my guard down. Yeah, what if, what if I actually showed up in the world sane and healthy and in full with full access to my faculties? What a scary thing it is to actually see. You lose the haze, right? All right. If we are, if we are ready, we can drop a heart in the chat and um, we can get ready to go into the next prompt. But let me just say, as we are moving through this experience, Tree's like, yeah, hurry up. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> I haven't heard from Tree the whole time. She's like, boom, yeah, drop a heart. I got it. Let's go. Move on. Move along. <laughs> um, let me just say thank you all for being here this morning. This is Morning Journal session number 197. Um, <laughs> uh, Alberto says, I can't, all I do is win, baby, no matter what. Money on my mind, I can't never get enough. Get enough. And every time I step into the building, Everybody in hands do what? And then do what? <laughs> All right. I wish, um, yeah. So as I was saying, it's the top of the hour. This is Morning Journal session 197. Now what that means is we've done 196 of these before and that's incredible. It's incredible that we've been able to connect in all these ways. And Sweet is in the building and was there for like one of the first ones. Um, and the first one was nothing like this. The first ones were basically a question and then, uh, you know, you would, it was a lot of type in ASMR. <laughs> Mez is also has also been here since the beginning. Ashley's been here before the beginning. It was a lot of typing ASMR. Um, there weren't all these background changes. So the prompts weren't in the background. The conversation wasn't um, as fluid. Uh, but I think the intent was always there to start the day with a little bit of reflection and, you know, introspection. And it eventually it evolved to something like what we are experiencing right now. So I just got to say it's great to have you here for this part. We're coming up on episode 200. It's constantly growing um, and changing and evolving to hopefully be more of what it can be. I want to make sure I also shout out Boots, who really put me on to what the possibilities were. He was the first person that, like, said, hey, here. He bought me a streamer pack and gave me background changes. And that just opened up the whole, I was like, oh, wow, I can change the background more than three times? Word. So he hooked that up um, and inaugurated Purple Friday. And from that point on, it's just continued to grow. And we've met a lot of great friends along the way. So I invite you, if this is your first time here, or, you know, one of your first few times here, we're here for you every morning, 6 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so, yeah. Come check us out. Be a part of the growth and make some impressive connections with some cool folks in here. 
Um, so I saw the hearts before um, I started talking. So we are ready to go to the next prompt. I just needed to set that up. Now, this is one that might give you a little, ins a little insight into an answer for the last one. Alberto, thank you so much. Popcorn in the chat. Love it. Love it. Um, Emmo is here. Welcome in, Emmo. Thank you for joining us this morning, this beautiful Tuesday morning. Hope that you're feeling well. Hope that Seton is feeling well. Right, don't ask me about my cat before you ask about me. I ask about you first. <laughs> Alberto, thank you so much. I really appreciate the love. I love it, fam. Thank you so much. Now, if you notice the prompt uh, that came up in the background, this is a sort of a commentary on the quality of your relationships and the people that you have in your life and your experience. So think about this. If my dreams come true, my family and friends will. What will they do? How will the people around you who are close to you what might happen for them or inside their soul <laughs> if you messed around and made your dreams come true? So Tree says, if my dreams come true, my family and friends will get smaller. There will be fewer. I wonder why that is, or why you think that will, might be the, will be the case. Because it'll be, if my dreams come true, my family and friends will ask for money. Hmm. Maybe they'll be jealous or resentful. Maybe. So, yeah, that could happen. Maybe you've seen that. You know, get a little taste of money now. You know, things switch up. Emmo is dropping a like for us. Thank you so much, Emmo. So if my dreams come true, my family and friends will blank. What will they do? How might they respond or react? So, so Alberto says that my day ones, they grow up and come up, no handouts, but they get the op to make work uh, with me or for me. So you're like, you're going to bring, you know, if people are really down to grind, they can ride with you. But you're not just putting them up. You're not just putting them on. They're not going to be no, you're not going to have no entourage. <laughs> Matt says, I know some fan would take me out to dinner. Well, that's, that's healthy. Sweet says, they will be in awe of my perfect calves. So that's Sweet's dream in life. <laughs> so you go check, this, check these diamonds, these diamonds on the back of my legs. So Noble says, my family will not make a difference in any way. My friends will be positive. Tree says that you, Tree's down to take Mez out to dinner, maybe even prepare a lovely, delicious dinner with Mez if Mez's dream came true. So I think that the fact that we are noticing, um, some of us are noticing that our win might change some of the, our relationships. For some of us, it's in a good way because we have folks who are genuinely rooting for us. And for some, for others, it might be in not a great way because we feel like 
you know, there's secretly some sort of um, our wind might shine an unfavorable light on them. Sweet says, on a real note, I think my family and friends would be ecstatic for me. I mean, yeah, I guess that's that's like a sign of a true friend, right? When you when they are, you know, when they're showing when they're showing their appreciation and they're pulling for you, they're like, go us. Awesome. You have a great family and friends. Mine are all greedy. Tree. There you go. I see. I see what you're saying there. It's like, I know, I know my people. My people would be like. And sometimes that does provide a little bit of a disincentive. It's like, what's the use? Sweet says, I've kept the same close friends since grade school. I got lucky. Yeah, some of us are lucky. We find some good ones and we're able to stay connected. Alberto says, I feel that I feel you, that your people will become haters. Time to drop them now. It, they might that might be the reasons why you are not on. If you feel like it's the wrong people, go ahead and shed that dead weight now. I think that um, ideally we can recognize the need to do that, and we also recognize our need for connection and our fear of isolation. Um, I think that something deep down inside of us knows that we can't fully make it alone. And, you know, there's a fear whether it's rational or not, or not, that if we become ostracized from the people who are around us, that somehow we won't be able to survive. That's sort of a deeply embedded fear that sometimes it's a struggle depending on what your, depending on the way you were raised and what your situation was coming up. That might be a difficult sort of internal struggle that you have to deal with. You got money? Buy me this. Can I? Let me hold something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Man says, this song isn't making me sad, but it fits. Maybe it is a little bit. Um, I, I thought about skipping it, but I was like, nah, we'll ride with it. All right. So understanding the impact that your potential success will have on your relationships and the quality of the relationships that you have right now will come into focus because I think one of the greatest opportunities that we have for growth is within community and within the context of relationships with other people. Because it's really, at the end of the day, there isn't any way that you can achieve any su substantial success without interact interacting with other people or having your work interact with other people. You know? There is no abundance in isolation. So you're in the marketplace, you're in the community, you're in connection with other people, and you're making some sort of contribution of your time and talent or whatever the case may be. So there's other people involved. We gotta figure out how to navigate that. Sweet says, kind of on subject, I ran into an old friend for the first time in like eight years. He'd had all these victories and he's used them to build something he knew I wouldn't respect. But I couldn't help but be happy for the guy. I love how... I love how um, tactfully vague that was, Sweet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you you know. 
it's nice to see a chronic failure get something out the mud. Yeah. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, I, uh, maybe that's what this is really about. It's about getting it out the mud. Um, Pandora, Mr. Swag 2021. Thanks for joining us. All right. People hated on Jesus, so who am I to think I don't have him? <laughs> right. All right. So if we are ready, we're talking about, yeah, the inability or the necessity of dealing with potential haters, you know, it's a part of the game. Mr. Swag is asking, how's your morning? I think our morning is going pretty well so far. We're getting things rolling. We are hourin' some change into the session. I hope that you're doing well as well. We're getting ready to go into the next prompt if everybody is down for that. All right, here we go. All right. Let's see. So the next question, Mr. Swag 2021, thanks for the like. Um, our next question, what are you afraid to let go of? What are you afraid to let go of? So this sort of takes the question about um, it sort of takes the question about what do you lose when what will you lose when you win what are you afraid to let go of Mr. Swag said friends and family hmm friends and family MTG freight phases Alberto says, I, I, I can't think of anything, honestly, except for my hair. I'd be hurt. You know, yeah, Alberto is known for keeping the waves on swim, 360, and all that good stuff. So I, I get it. It might be a little bit of a blow to have to put, you know, all that work, all that training. Um, all that training going to waste. So this is about... It's not necessarily about losing. It's about letting go. Um, it's about letting go. There's a difference between losing something and letting it go. Because it's a choice. Because I, I think by definition, if you let it go, you didn't lose it. Because you know where it is. You know where you left it. So it's not lost, but it's just let go. So Noble is afraid to lose my quest for the single one opportunity to prove I know solidly what is prove solidly what I know is true. I think it's really dangerous to think that there is just one of anything. Um, because to think that there is just one of anything makes you live in constant fear um, because I think that if there's just one opportunity man I think that there I think that opportunity exists in a more abundant space than that because I think if you think that there's just one you will overthink everything because if this is the one you don't want to lose it I think all opportunities kind of exist in a realm of there's another one around the corner just kind of be open be present so sweet says I'm afraid I might lose the chip on my shoulder but I understand for me the path dictates some more compassion 
and humility. So sometimes we think we need to stay the underdog, right? It's like, I got to be the underdog. I got to kind of show up and I got to be kind of brash and in your face. But maybe that's not the role that you can honestly, honestly play. What good is it to be winning and still acting like you're losing? That might, all right, block some of your growth. So Alberto says, I'm afraid to let go of my relationship with God. I can appreciate that. So Noble says, I have a need to know that what I know is in fact accurate and true, straight on. What if it isn't? What would happen if, and um, as is the fact, what would be the consequences of being wrong? Is it catastrophic to be wrong? Or is it just inevitable that at least in some cases you will be wrong? And what does being wrong feel like? How damaging is it to discover that you are wrong? To discover that you are wrong? How stridently do you insist when you are right? What would it feel like if everything in your experience, like you can, you can wrap everything that you say with the phrase, you know, but I, but I could be wrong. How would that feel if you acknowledge that this is what I believe, this is what I think, but I could be wrong? What would that do? I'm afraid to let go of the memories I have of my dad, especially now that he is gone. Hmm. Yeah. Noble says, it would destroy everything I've come to build over time based on shaky principles. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe it won't matter that much. Because what happens when you are proven wrong is that now you know something. <laughs> you know? You might find another way to be right that might be better. So, I don't know. My greatest day, or my greatest thing, the greatest thing I ever let go is the need to be right. So much freedom. <laughs> There's so much freedom in the open and continuous acknowledgement that I might be wrong. So I might as well just go ahead and try. I, you know, I'll try it. Might be right. Might be wrong. Yeah. If it's wrong, okay. Let's try something else, you know? <laughs> I don't get stuck. But, I mean, you know. That's just me. So, Matt says, the need to be needed is something. Yeah. Mr. Swag says, I'm going to head out. I'm a fan, so I'll be back one day. All right, Mr. Swag. Thank you for being here. afraid to let go of all right taking a couple breaths here we are a minute and an hour and 22 minutes into the session 
I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate your engagement and, you know, what could be some of the questions are a little bit challenging. And then, you know, I'm me, so I might poke at you a little bit and invite you to think about things a little more deeply than you might at first glance. But I don't know anything, you know. I'm just asking a question. <laughs> I'm just exploring and trying to stay open to whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to stay open to the possibilities. All right. If we're ready, we can go ahead and drop a heart in the chat. <laughs> Man, it's like it's like an intervention in here sometimes. <laughs> it's like a low key. Um, well, let's not call it um. Let's not call it an intervention. Let's not let's not label it that way. <laughs> What are you afraid to let go of? Emma says this prompt. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Let's get ready to go. Next one. And this one is right here. What brings out your competitive side? What brings out your competitive side? I think it's important to note that competition is a form of collaboration. And I think there are some things that can be pulled out of us um, when we are you know, engaged in, with someone else. Um, so let's think about competition, not necessarily as a duel to the death, <laughs> but as a different form of collaboration, as a way to bring out more of what's possible for you. It's a tool. So Mez says, fun vibes bring out my competitive side. That's interesting. Maybe the vibes being fun make you feel safe. <laughs> Emma says, apparently, it's driving for a lot of people in here. <laughs> Getting on the road just brings out your competitive side. Um, Noble says, the right games with the right friends in the right situations. Yeah, I think that when the vibe is right, you know, you feel like, okay, well, let's kind of go back and forth a little bit. And um, ain't nobody going to get hurt in here. Matt says, I worked in a corporate office and no one was a hater when the food and decorations were out. <laughs> Whenever there's cake. Oh, there's cake? Who's, who's birthday? Hey, there's cake in the break. There's cake in the break room. Cake in the break room. That's the name of a. I think that could be the name of a. You know, an anti-capitalist punk band. Cake in the break room. <laughs> oh man. Activities? Nah. Donuts? How many are left? <laughs> Noble says, a good solid game of magic with a round of good friends. How many is that? One for me or zero for you? Which is it? Yeah, no. <laughs> How many donuts are left? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, man. What brings out your competitive side? And maybe you're someone who doesn't really consider yourself competitive for whatever reason. If that's true for you, do you have an aversion to competition? 
or have you already transcended that need? So it looks like Alberto is resurrecting Uh, resurrecting something from the deep dark past <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that Esso says wanting to do better than last time brings out my competitive side so I think it's really valuable to um it's really valuable to be in competition with yourself. I think that's the most useful competitor, your past self. Now, the prerequisite to make that work is that you have taken the time to really um, taken stock of and measured how you've done. Alexa says a game of abalone against Noble brings out your competitive side. That's a game. I don't know. I don't know about that game. <laughs> of course, it's a game. You said a game. <laughs> um, spectators and stakes bring out the competitive side. I think that it's di it hits different when other people are watching, right? If you're just in a park playing 21, yeah, you want to beat the person that you're playing against. You're playing the game, you want to win. You play to win the game. But let there be some people out there watching, then it hits different, right? Or if there's some money on the line, it hits different. So for Chino, is playing spades or pinochle, brings out that competitive side. Tetris brings out Emo's competitive side. Shanti is here. Welcome in. How are you this morning? Mez says, I used to be better in front of a crowd. Now, not so much. Now, not so much. Juno, welcome in. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Let us know what brings out your competitive side. It could be, it could be a specific person, you know, maybe, you know, somebody come in, you know, they step into the room and they serve in the day. They got that face beat, you know, they walking in looking all snatched and you, you know, you wearing a potato sack and you're like, wait a minute, let me let me go over there. <laughs> let me step in the let me step in the room and you know. So Emo says, when people start talking about college degrees, it brings out my competitive side. So Emo is a master. <laughs> oh man. You know, don't don't say anything about, oh, yeah, I did a couple semesters at such and such, you know. And Emma was like, yeah, you know, I got a master's. So there's that. <laughs> oh, man. So Noble says, playing any game with Alexis makes me feel a little bit competitive. Ghostly Hollows. Thank you so much for the like. Chino says, I'm a spadeologist. Everybody, have you ever noticed that there's just some things that everybody is purportedly good at? There's just some skills that everyone seems to be above average at. And just by definition, it can't be true. It's just like I think... Maybe 70% of drivers say they're above average or some, some crazy number like that. But, you know, 
just mathematically it's not true Chino's like we're running thing find out you'll learn today <laughs> oh man it's like yeah I am nice I'm nice he's like put some money on it I think anytime like co uh, collaborative collaborative games um, where you're playing in teams you can only you're only as good as your partner you know <laughs> you could be unless you cheating you can be as good as you want to be if your partner's trash then y'all are trash so I mean you know that's just a fact of the matter it's like can you play though can you play play like do you play <laughs> It's like now it's not going to be any fun. It's too stressful now. Nobody wants to be your partner. Nobody wants to be a partner with someone who is a spadeologist because now it's too much stress here. It's no fun now. Because now they're going to be like mad mad. They're going to be big mad if you make one error. They're like, oh my God. What? <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right, folks. If we are ready, let me know. Um, Gina says, I don't choose anybody. They choose me, baby. <laughs> hey, I don't choose. I get chose. I love it. There's another, um, there's another vocation that is known for getting, you know, getting chose. All right. Inside roar. Good incentive roar. Welcome. Okay, incentive roar is here, folks, so, so we can relax. Um, and Wham, listening over on YouTube, says, in case nobody has told you today, I'm here to tell you that you are beautiful and important. That's something that's worth knowing, worth hearing. All right, let's get ready to go to what will be the uh, final official prompt of the day. The final official prompt of the day. And again, thanks everybody for your participation. And I guess before we get into that, let me just kind of do a quick recap. Um, 18 beautiful souls in the VIP. So glad that you chose to spend some time with me. This is the journey that we've been on so far. Um, we talked about first whether you would rather read aloud every word or sing everything you say out loud. If you would rather have to read every word that you see, everything that you read, you have to read it out loud. Or would, would you rather sing everything that you say out loud? And I guess the point is that either one of those would be something that would bring a lot of attention to yourself. And I don't know how comfortable you would be with that. <laughs> and I'm curious to say what hear what some of the new folks would have to say about that. Whether you want to live as if you are a character in a musical, but you're the only one. Kalolis definitely would sing. And Center Roar, thank you so much for the like. I appreciate you. Um, the underappreciated part of this bargain is the fact that we are not, I don't think we're necessarily conscious of all the text that is in our environment and just casually the things that we read as we're walking by. So just imagine how much of a cacophony it would be when you're walking down the aisles of a grocery store, having to read every label out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Um, Shanti says, we always make top one. That brings out my competitive spirit. I love that. I mean, I think it's cool for sure. I try not to focus too much on it. Um, you know, if we have a good conversation, that's what matters most to me. 
but it's nice to be up there in, you know in front it's nice all right ebony juno welcome so we kind of started started t- uh, talking about whether we would rather read or sing then we talked about the crowd that we might fit in with at first glance it's like well i don't really fit in anywhere and I guess that's one of the reasons why I chose the, cr- the word might. What, cry- what crowd might you fit in with? So Juno says, I came in to say hi. I got to get ready for school. Juno, it's always great to see you. Thank you for being here. All right. So what crowd might you fit in? I think that we never fully transcend our need for connection. (laughs) For sure. I think that um, uh, my cousin Richard was picking up what Tina was putting down about. I don't choose. I get chose. (laughs) Because Chino is low-key a Mac. I can dig it. Shanti says, I would fit in with the oddballs. The weirdos and oddballs. That's us. I can dig it. The next question that we went into, you know, acknowledging that to some degree we never fully transcend our need to be long somewhere. What's one thing that makes you stand out? What is one thing that makes you stand out? So thinking about the unique parts of ourselves. And I think what we are drawn to are sometimes people who stand out in a way that we do. So Shanti says, my confidence makes me stand out. I can see that. I see that. The next question was a little bit of a, you know, it was a little bit of a curveball, a little bit of um, something to maybe think about, was what would you lose if you won? And similarly, we considered if your dreams came true, what would happen with your friends and family? Like, what would happen to them? So what would you lose if you won? And if your dreams came true, my family and friends would blank. So it's thinking about the way that our potential success might have an impact on our life and relationships as sort of a root behind our fear of success. Um, The fear of success, I think, is one of the underlying causes of procrastination. The reason why we don't fully go is because of something that we are afraid that we might lose in the process. So WNF and I am Carlos have joined us as we wrap up the conversation. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're just kind of recapping things. Uh, as we go deep, went deeper into the conversation, we talked about the things that we might be afraid to let go of. Maybe there's something that you are holding on to that you know in order to get to the next phase of your adventure to the next level that you're trying to attain. Um, Maybe you have to let it go and it might be difficult. Sometimes things that are not even great for you are are a problem. It's hard to let them go because we know them. Even if it's bad, it's familiar. So we know how to deal with it. So we hold on to it. And then finally, we talked about, or the prompt that you see in the background is, what brings out your competitive side? One of the ways that we collaborate with each other, one of the ways that we are in relationship with other people is through competition. Um, We are engaged in sort of a mutually agreed upon battle. (laughs) Or it's an opportunity for us to demonstrate our skills, to sharpen our skills, to learn and grow in a very um, 
intensive way is through competition. And that competition might be with yourself or some version of yourself in the past. So one of the valuable things about being intentional about marking your progress and measuring your growth. So sweet, you got to get out that tape measure and measure around those calves and see what that circumference is doing. You know, maybe there's a mark on a, there's a mark on the backboard. Get you a piece of talk, chalk and jump up there. Draw a line on that on the bottom of that backboard and see what that vertical doing. Whatever the way, whatever ways there are that are relevant to measure your progress. Going back to that is a great way to kind of use competition as a way to enhance your growth. So don't be afraid of competition. Don't be afraid to leverage that the extra um, kind of motivational juice that they can give you uh, because that is one way that you can grow a little bit more quickly or a little bit more intentionally is if you are engaged in that way kind of enhances the flow of the situation so sometimes you just need to engineer your environment so that you can win more consistently all right So with that, um, we're going to get ready to go into what will be our our final prompt of the session. So let's get into that. Hello, Ace. Good to have you here this morning. Let's take a look at our day today. What are one one to three essential one to three essential activities for today I know that you know there might be a lot of things on your to-do list you might have a really busy situation going on and for most of us there's more things to do than you can realistically hope to get done within the course of one day we have projects that are bigger than that We have projects that renew at the top of every 24 because we know if we build in Rome, can't build Rome in a day. But I think that if we can find a way to take care of one to three essential things and keep revisiting them, then we can kind of build some momentum in our experience. So think about today, what are one to three essential activities that you have? So I am Carlos says I am going to work then work on my small business and stay motivated so managing your psychology I guess that is a one way the activity of managing your psychology is something that everybody has to do what are some of the ways that you stay motivated Carlos sometimes it's motivation that we need sometimes it's discipline Sometimes it's clarity. Well, all of these are different sort of states, mental states that um, we have access to that help us to manage our psychology in relationship with a task that's before us. So Carlos says, I see the bigger picture and that gives me motivation. Love it. Noble says, I'm gonna introduce a new player a new player work. Introduce a new player, work with my games, spend time with Alexis. Got it. All right. Mez says, eat good, meditate, hydrate. All right. Sweet says, writer's room, A, lunch date, Okay, got a lunch date with the crush. I can dig it. And enjoy my coffee. Oh man, nothing like a little lunch date. Where are we going? What are we having for lunch? What's, let me get some feedback. What would you say is the ideal 
thing to have at a lunch date? Like what, what type of food is great? I mean, it's the middle of the day, right? Um, maybe you don't want to do something too heavy. But what, what might be a good... Um, man says butter. <laughs> oh, man. Tacos and margs. Yeah, okay. Margaritas and tacos for lunch. Love it. Salad. Got it. Half a stick of butter. <laughs> Oh man, sweet. He's gonna go to lunch at Paula Dean's um, Pacific Northwest. Um, yeah, Paula Dean's of the Pacific Northwest. Tim says, "Wake up early, done. Work out, done. Do some CES to maintain certification." Okay. Looks like you have, uh, yeah, that's pending. Looks like you're off to a good start. It's good to see that you're up and at them. And that you've, yeah, and that you've chosen to spend a little time with us here. I love that. And, uh, yeah. One to three. I think um, I got a conversation coming up right after the stream, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, uh, I got some writing to do. That's pretty essential. And I think, yeah, I think um, I'm pretty well rested. I, I mean, I feel well rested right now. So that's good. I feel like I'm going to take advantage of this heightened level of energy that I'm feeling and try to work on something that's that's um, challenging. Nico Suave is here. I is here. Thank you so much. When I say I is here, I always sound like I'm messing up the grammar. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, y'all see. There is no tea left in this cup that I keep sipping from. I'm finally done with that. All right. So here we go. We're running. Um, we're getting ready to. We got ten minutes left, so I, I definitely, I definitely want to um, get some VIP time in for the last ten minutes or so. So let me pull up our our theme music. Um, all right, let's see if I can pull up our, our theme music and we can shout everyone out in the VIP and get ready to, yeah, just kind of hang out for a bit. All right, all right, y'all hear it. So I don't know if you hear your name called out, maybe you want to like respond if you um you know you might want to respond if you hear your name called out um because i do appreciate you for being here and the time and attention that you share with us so we got mez holding the reins i know you said that you were gonna just kind of hang out and listen but i appreciate your contribution to the conversation and i appreciate you for being a long time friend to me and to the different work that I have been able to present here. I certainly appreciate you. SOK is here. Thank you for the time and the attention and the insights that you share. We got, <clears throat> let me clear my throat a little bit. We got Alberto is up in here. Someone who's as long known me a long time is clear bringing up things like bada bing is something like none of y'all have ever really seen and we also got like chino the spadeologist don't cut it's like college kids playing around the table slapping down cars because you know we all willing and able we got oyo 
or the I I say is here. Crystal clear that you always come with the vibes when you show up in the live. I appreciate you and all that you do. We got the tallest gnome up in here. What up? Glad that you decided that you could come through and chill with us. So nice to have you and nice to get to know you. See you at the next show. You got Noble Ancient up in here. Ready to do that gamer shop tonight at 6 p.m. Or three if you're in the Pacific. If you want to get specific, we also have Tree up in here who somehow lost the, the tie. But oh my, I appreciate you and why are you so cool? And always here showing all that love and support when you're making those moves. So we got Alexis Autumn Elf. We're running out of time on the beat, so I'm just going to have to just say the rest of the names, I guess, if the beat stop took too long to get through to go all the way from the bottom to the top but i appreciate you we also got pandora i know if you if you at the bottom of the list now you feel cheated because i didn't wrap yours <laughs> maybe i'll just start this the track over hey i could just run it back all right where was i i said pandora is here alexis is here true come back tomorrow at eight 9 p.m. Alexis is going to be gaming with Noble. Make sure you check out Alexis Autumn Elf. And Tim. Yo, Tim. What up, yo? Hey, listen. Y'all mess around and touch touch Tim's profile pic real quick. <laughs> Tim was a, a, a European sedan last week. <laughs> and uh, today, Tim is like, no. You you were friends with Dan? I don't know, maybe not much, but let me let me go ahead and shut the game down real quick. <laughs> Appreciate you for sure. Uh, we got Sweet up in here. What's happening? One of the originals coming through the scene. Yeah, I, I can't even rap no more. You know what I mean? Kind of threw me a little bit for a loop. We got Kaloli coming through with the short jams. First verse in the chorus. Also, we got Warrior up in here, kind of chilling in the background, dealing with all the things that come around, and we got Shanti. Wait a minute. Are we doing this? Here we go again, out here serving. Sheesh. Y'all come in here, y'all dressing up this morning. I love it. Um, let's see. Okay. Some of y'all might come, might have come in while I was, before I reset. So if I didn't see you, just charge it to my head and not my heart i appreciate you also emma was here you never let us know how seaton is doing um how's seaton doing this morning it's like no don't ask about my cat ask how i'm doing <laughs> all right we got more outro all right folks um if you're watching over on on youtube or facebook if you're watching me i'll see y'all tomorrow same time, 6 a.m. Eastern-ish. Feel free to rewind it back and leave your comments. And I'll get, you know, with regards to what we've been talking about. And we can keep the conversation going. Appreciate you.